Have you noticed that GPT-4 is getting worse over time while their costs are getting cheaper, even though they still call it GPT-4? Well, that is most likely thanks to model distillation, also known as knowledge distillation, which is a way for AI models to compress knowledge into a much more distilled form. It kind of uses the logic of fake it till you make it, but why do we need a model that is distilled in the first place? Wouldn't we be better off simply using the original model? So the great thing about it is that the good old big state of the art models are too expensive to host. Like one single 400 billion model needs around 300k worth of GPUs just to hold it together in place to provide service. And most of the time, people are just going to ask it, how many R's are in the word strawberry? Which if you think about it, it's obviously an overkill for a state of the art model. Not to mention how complicated the GPU infrastructure would need to be to run a model that big. On top of all the efficient CPS you would need to do to make a super large model fast, it's even more mind boggling how these companies are even making money from this. Ah, monthly recurring subscriptions. Never mind. But for more context on running and building super large chatbots, you can check out my Llama 3.1 video. So by making a smaller model that contains the distilled knowledge of its larger counterpart seems pretty useful cost and speed wise, especially for companies like Meta that want to get models into people's hands like Llama 3.1 AB without having to train each and every model size from the ground up. There are also some additional benefits like being able to hide the secret sauce of your model architecture while open sourcing your model or to speed up a specific process in your model rather than targeting a smaller model size, but their methodologies are a lot more complicated, which I'll probably get to near the end of the video. So if you're familiar with the term GPT-4 Turbo, SDXL Turbo, or SDXL Lightning, these models are actually distilled in some way or another. The same goes to the latest state-of-the-art text-to-image model FluxDev and Schnell, which are distilled from its Pro model. And yes, model distillation can be done on any type of AI models, let it be image generation, language model, or even just basic classifications. But today, we will only talk about these two. In language modeling, the application of model distillation is a lot more straightforward. It all started with Distilled Bird back in 2019, which used knowledge distillation during pre-training to reduce the size of a model called Birds by 40%, while retaining 97% of its language understanding capabilities. Fast forward to now, the process has remained roughly the same, probably due to how much simpler the transformer architecture is compared to image generation but there are still many different ways you can approach this. So generally with model distillation, you are using a bigger model, which is called the teacher model, to teach a smaller model called the student model. The teacher model is usually some super capable models, like the GPT-4 legacy models or Llama 3.1405B. And the student model can be whatever you want, like an off-the-shelf pre-trained AB model, a pruned version of the teacher model, or simply a blank model with no knowledge at all would work. Not that it'll be a good idea, of course. Course. But basically, the student model is smaller and cheaper to run than the teacher model. Now, moving on to knowledge distillation, there are two major stages in the whole process. In the first stage, we have to extract the knowledge from the teacher model so it can later be used to train the student model. This process is called knowledge extraction and there are many ways to do this. The first way is to have the teacher model label some unlabeled datasets and basically generate a correct answer. The second way is to have the teacher model generate variants of the data from a demonstration to expand the dataset. The the third way is to have the teacher model synthesize a collection of data given a topic. The fourth way is to feed some data into the teacher and extract the teacher's internal knowledge features such as data distributions or lockets, and use those meta information as the training target. And the fifth and the last way is to have the teacher generate feedback on the student's generations which can be corrections, preference rankings, or elaborations of challenging samples. These are most of the methods used for knowledge extraction and the extracted data from the teacher are then used to train the student model in the next stage where the actual knowledge distillation process happens. There are also a variety of ways to perform this distillation process, and there are four common algorithms to do so. The first algorithm is the most basic one, that is supervised fine-tuning, where you provide the student a question and an answer to learn from, which works well together with the labeling technique for knowledge extraction. The second algorithm is a bit more complicated, it is to minimize divergence in probability distributions or aim at enhancing the similarity of hidden states. What that basically means is making predictions more like the teacher model or by aligning the inner workings of the student model to produce similar results from the teacher. And this goes hand in hand with the feature knowledge extraction technique. The third algorithm is reinforcement learning. So you basically use a reward model that can be another teacher model or a fine-tuned student model and use it to generate reward signals to drive the student model towards a certain type of answer. And lastly, we have ranking optimization, 
which is a bit similar to reinforcement learning but differs by not having a reward model to send a signal and instead have the teacher judge a few generations from the student and rank it so that the student would know what's good and what it should learn from and what's bad and what should never be generated ever again. Image generation on the other hand can use similar techniques to that of language modeling but it does have its variants. The rough distillation process would look something like training a smaller model on the generated images of a larger model. The exact method to train it would be similar to the logic of Gans artist and critic paradigm where the goal is to improve and try to trick the critic that the smaller model's generation is better than the bigger model. And in image generation's case, the distillation target can be on something other than distilling the knowledge into a smaller model size. If you have generated AI images before, you may have noticed how diffusion models gradually transform random noise into something recognizable over 30 steps. And the more steps there are, the longer it'll take for the model to generate the image. Well, something called step distillation is created in which images can be generated within four steps or even just one step. How it's basically done is to make a copy of the same text to image model, set one as the teacher and the other as a student, then you make the student to learn to generate something in 15 steps that would usually take the teacher 30 steps and once that's done, make a copy of that student which can generate in 15 steps and set one as the teacher and the other as the student and repeat the whole process to reduce half of its generation steps until you reach a certain amount of steps you are satisfied with. So it is pretty magical that you would barely have to wait to generate an image if you get it down all the way to one step generation, but the quality of course wouldn't be up there as it is distilled. Another interesting aspect of distillation is that you can use this technique to hide how you made your state-of-the-art architecture, all while being open weight. Or, well, yes, but not really. So there's technically a practice now where if a company ever wants to publish open weights models yet want to keep their model architecture hidden, they will just use model distillation where the student model is slightly different architecturally from the original and have it copy the capabilities of that private model through model distillation, which avoids having to disclose their secret sauce. So people would try out the open weights version and see, wow, that is amazing, then pay for the APIs for the original model for even better results. And that is definitely a good way for companies to sustain themselves while providing something for the community. I mean, open source would of course be much nicer, but unfortunately, we live in a society. Anyways, maybe next time I'll talk about model size compression and quantization, so stay tuned. So yeah, if today's topic fascinates you and makes you want to get into machine learning, today's sponsor, Brilliant, might be the perfect gateway for you. Brilliant is a learning platform where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons ranging from math, data, analysis, programming, and AI. This means that you'll be solving problems hands-on and play with concepts interactively, which is also proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. With all the content on Brilliant being carefully crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Google, and more, Brilliant helps you build your critical thinking skills through problem solving and not memorizing. Along with easy-to-access lessons, whether you want to spend five minutes a day or chomp it all down during your free time, these fun lessons can help you to have both personal and professional growth. Right now, they have also just published their lessons on how LLMs work, where they provide interactive content where you can explore how LLMs build vocabulary, choose their next word, and more. And if you want to revisit some of the calculus one or two concepts, they have some of the best visualizations to help you learn or refresh your memory with, and maybe playing with Brilliant will help you build a super strong intuition that you'll never forget. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash buy cloud or click on the link down in the description. You will also get a 20% off an annual premium subscription. And thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Well, if you enjoyed today's breakdown and would love to stay up to date on the latest AI research papers, I have a newsletter covering the most hot and juicy new research every week, ranging from LLMs to diffusion models. So go check that out if you're interested. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Deegan, Miguelum, Robert Zaviasa, Owen Ingram, Lewis Muck, Tanaro, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.